Hi on NPI, brought to you by DigiKey. This week is Texas Instruments new product introduction. The greatest and latest new products on DigiKey Lady Data from Texas Instruments. What could you possibly be showing us? I know they have come up with so many products. This week we're looking at the new CC thirty three thousand series um, or thirty three XX series because there's actually a couple. There's four different chips in this family. I, I feel like today in particular, we're seeing a lot of things from the past. This is a blast from the past. The past we might be done with the past. The past ain't done with us. The CC is back. That's right. So this is a uh, CC33XX series. It's the simple link. Um, this is a, a companion chip. It's not, I don't, you, you probably can program it on its own, but it's meant to be a companion to a microcontroller or microcomputer to add uh, Wi-Fi 6, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and BLE over SPI or SDIO uh, plus UART for, um, so for can, BLE. So it's an add-on chip, so it's kind of like, um, is there what's out there that's similar that people might know? Well, I'm actually going to talk about oh. what it's similar to. So, um, so this is the next generation of what was originally the CC3000, which was like one of the first, it wasn't the first Wi-Fi companion chip, but it was like the first low-cost companionship. I mean, the, the price now is kind of nutty because there's like only 50 in like the universe. But at the time it was released, it was available for only 12 bucks a piece um, or like maybe 15 bucks a piece. It was very mm. inexpensive compared to many other modules. Um, and so it was possible to actually make a little break. We, you know, it's no longer made. Like I said, people don't you know, use the CC3000 anymore. But back in 2013, um, this was like the shit because you wanted to add Wi-Fi. There was no such thing as a Wi-Fi microcontroller at the time. Um, it was, um, you know, something you had to add on. And a lot of times people would actually like glue a Linux computer, which basically Arduino Yun is an open WRT. There's a lot of projects where you would like take an open, open WRT board, like a little Linux router, and you'd connect it to your microcontroller to get like analog inputs or like rotary encoders. Um, and then basically Yun is, is sort of like a miniaturized version of that. But like, it, that's kind of like a big deal. And you often don't want to run a full Linux computer. There's a lot of power. It's, there's a slowdown. You have to have like the interface. And what's really about the CC3000, it was like you could run it on something as small as an Arduino Uno, um, with the 2K of RAM, 32K of flash, or you know any microcontroller basically that was popular. And you could do um, DHCP, you could do DNS lookup, you can do ping. This was like a really big deal. Um, I'm trying to think there was earlier modules, but yeah, they were like 50 bucks a piece. It was very expensive to, to do Wi-Fi or, or Ethernet. And often they communicated over AT commands, which is a real pain in the ass. Um, you could do stuff like send tweets. Um, and, you know, this chip actually kind of powered like a, a massive ecosystem of low-cost IoT boards um, like this uh, Spark Core. This is like the, before the Photon. So it's called the Spark Core and then Spark Chains are named Particle. Um, so it's basically the particle core. And this was an STM32F something something um, on the back. And on the top, there was a C3000. Um, and this was like a, a massive deal. It was like, you know, you know, they sort of sold it at cost. It was like 20 bucks or so or 30 bucks. At the time, this was considered a very inexpensive IoT microcontroller that had like Wi-Fi and, you know, yeah. microcontroller and you could do USB. Particle was called Spark. Well, they, they changed their name. Yeah, and, they, and so this got updated. But this was... Um, yeah. Uh, you know, six hundred and seventy thousand dollars. It's like half a million dollars for a Kickstarter. Uh, and it was a very, very big deal. Yeah, long time ago too. Um, yeah, 20, 2013. And then this was, you know, one of the things that was um, that happened was like, you know, as as that that chip was actually very, very successful. They came up with more versions, like the CC thirty one hundred. And what this added, I think, was. Um, I think it added SSL. Yeah, I think it added HTTPS, and I think it added uh, WPA2. It added a couple things um, to make it more useful because, you know, you do need SSL. But it only added SSL, like, 1.0, I think. Um, mm. And you couldn't upload your own certificates. I think you had, like, only one certificate you could use or something. Mm. And so the next one that came out was the CC3200. And what was neat was about this one is it actually you could run code on it. Like, it had a... It changed from the original CC3000 had an 8051 in it, which is amazing. By now, they had a uh, Cortex M5, uh, Cortex M4. And so you saw boards like the YPI, which was like an all-in-one. This is a CC3100 or 3200 with a sticker on top. 
um, yeah. essentially. And you could run MicroPython directly on it, which That's at the right. time was, was a pretty amazing thing. It was very low cost. Yeah, PyCon. This was the original. Yeah, the original. That's right. I totally forgot about that. I know. All right, so <laughs> well, we're talking about the 3300. Yeah. So now you, you've heard the whole history. Um, so, you know, there, there's this, all these families. So it's not surprising that they would come up with a new version, but um, they, they have, you know, all these ones were like little incremental ones. I think the 3300 is actually a big enough update because, you know, obviously I didn't cover the previous ones on INPI, but this one I think is interesting because uh, first off, they, they bumped up to Wi-Fi 6. They added BLE. It has uh, 5 gigahertz, not in the 3301 series. It's a 335 series. It's a little confusing. Um, but they basically have, you know, two, 2.4 gigahertz with or without Bluetooth and 2.4 slash 5 gigahertz with or without Bluetooth. And you're basically paying like 50 cents to a dollar more for every, every little thing you add. Um, but the, you know, the pricing they made it is, is pretty aggressive, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but right now they're just selling the raw chip and you can use the chip directly and it's, you know, not too bad to use. Um, as before they have SPI, but they also have SDIO. Uh, SDIO is going to be you know, you four pin parallel, it's going to be much faster. You're going to be able to um, push, I think they said up to like 50 megabit per second um, through it. So uh, maybe 50 megabytes. No, it's not 50 megabits. And um, they also have UART. That's what you're going to use for Bluetooth. And then they have coexistence um, and antenna selection. Um, so you can just like plop this on. And then, you know, you do have to, um, so, you'll, so you'll need a microcontroller, obviously, like this does have a chip inside of it, but like as far as I can tell, you can't program it. So you'll need SPI or SDIO plus UART, and we recommend the flow control so you can do HCI, BLE. Um, and this is similar to like every other chipset, like pretty much whenever you have BLE um, on something like, you know, espresso chip or um, like a Bluetooth companion chip or whatever, or even like a, a USB dongle, it's almost always using HCI which is like a UART interface and it communicates that way. Why they picked UART, I don't know, but Bluetooth did. This is how you wire it up. So it's not too bad. You need you do need some GPIO, but um, you know, the, the analog front end isn't so bad. You need a couple of capacitors, you need a power supply, you need one crystal, maybe two crystals if you want low power mode. Uh, looks like you have like a, a valen in there. Um, and then you just connect it to your antenna and you can use a, a chip antenna, or you, of course you can use your RPSMA, whatever you want. Um, to connect. And then you're probably like, well, like I want like a module and there is a module, but it hasn't been released yet. And I wanted to cover this before the module came out. Um, but it is mentioned on the TA website that they're going to have the module. If you're wondering like what it looks like, they, they also have like a booster pack. So it's like mm. that silver thing in the middle. Um, and so you see, it's really easy. You just put, I think like, it looks like a crystal at the top. And then, like I said, you just connect your antenna. Texas Instruments love making boards that have everything on. They do. But no, but this is like their MSP430 yeah, booster yeah. pack thing. You know, it goes with their dev kits. Yeah, it does, does everything. It does a lot. And I like how they have both antennas. So you, can, you can select which antenna. There's an antenna, you know, a selector. So you can either mm. pick antenna or external or internal. And for pricing, like I said, like the pricing is, is, is aggressive, um, which I like. So for the module, um, you can get the CC3301. That's the Bluetooth low energy with 2.4 gigahertz only. And it's optimistic, but they're like basically 290 for quantity 1000, like one reel. Ooh. And then the fancy 3351 module, so that's 2.4 and 5 gigahertz plus BLE, that's going to be 350. Again, this is budgetary. It's a little optimistic usually. It's not always available at that price, but it's like we're starting to actually, um, the prices are very reasonable. It's within comp the other competition. So you know, we've covered other Wi Fi chips here, and it's when you, like. When you say other competition, Name one. Well, I don't know. Like, no, no. I mean, like, competition as far as like when you release a. Uh, board well, like, like real tech has chips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what, what are and, the ranges in there? And you know, and, and you know, yeah, they're going to be about two to three dollars. Yeah, okay. so, so it's they, it's within the range. They they priced it right. Yeah, they priced it. I think what what I like is that you know they they stepped away from like the ten fifteen dollar price and they're like okay it's going to be like. Three to four bucks. I would have expected this to be like 30 bucks and been like, oh man, it's 30 bucks. Otherwise, I'd use it. Well, I think what, well, because somebody actually mentioned to me that TI was like, they were like, oh, we, we have to we have to compete. And so they're being competitive, which is good. It's good for the customers. Yeah. So I, you can add like a really good IoT for, you know, you know, $3. Just to blend some stuff together. And Wi Fi 5. You know, 5 gigahertz isn't always available on every chip. And, you know, just because it's in, in my mind, Texas Instruments is obviously a U.S. company. If we want to see, you know, an ESP32-like entity start to come out of the U.S. in some way, 
Well, I'd love if you could program the chip. I mean, it's a Cortex M4. You know, a Cortex M4 with Wi-Fi, yeah. 2.45 gigahertz and BLE like, built in many, would be really sweet. How so many millions cool. of ESP32s are out there? Right. So like, I don't know. This could happen. This could work. Okay. Right. So, right. Uh, so next up, um, you can download the um, uh, firmware. There's a uh, Linux kernel. So, you know, you, in SDIO mode, you can connect it up directly to your Linux device and it will act like, you know, a, a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth interface and the kernel will manage it. Or uh, if you are a microcontroller user, they have an RTOS driver and they have a, a driver porting guide and they tell you like, here's all the functions that you have to implement. You know, timer, SPI write, SPI read, UART write, UART read, but they do have the driver written for you, so you don't have to do all that work. And it's in stock, so you can pick up the chip right now. Like I said, the module's not available yet, but you could start developing with this. It's not, it's a QFN, it's not too hard to solder. You can make a breakout board, get started with the design, and then when you're ready to do your final and you want, you know, a qualified module that's ready to go, you can uh, bump yourself to the module. Yeah. Um... This is neat, and I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, if How many millions of little tiny devices are out this in the world? I mean, now? everything, but what's interesting, I'll, I'll say something interesting. I've taken apart a lot of IoT devices, and a lot of them go with real tech chips that have five gigahertz. Five gigahertz is a very desirable thing. And a lot of low cost IoT chips these days don't have five gigahertz. And so yeah. I, I, that's the kind of, you know, Wi Fi 6 and, and 5G, I think is like, that's where they're, they're really pushing. Yeah. The, the I, market, I which see, is smart. I see a lot of stuff because we're doing IoT stuff. Like if this was two gigahertz I, two only, I would like probably not cover yeah. it. Yeah, a lot of the IoT stuff that I have to use for our testing or in our home or something yeah. like that, when you install it, it says you have to have a two gigahertz network. I know, but it's... In some form. But that's going to end eventually. Yeah. You can't you can't depend on it. Yeah. Some people, you know, they don't control their Wi-Fi and they're like, only the five gigahertz works within my location. Yeah, and these are like pretty high-end things that are like, no, only two gigahertz. Okay, okay. that's this week's INFPI. Exciting. This is like the classic INFPI, by the way. This is like, there's a module. Lydia is going to do stuff. There's history. You're only going to see it here first. CC3000. Ah, remember that? That was crazy. That was a, that was that was crazy. It's a crazy ride. That's INFPI. INFPI.